but still in fact a parent not my boss I don't I don't actually answer to them so get bent why are you like this My name is Sydney, welcome back to the Thunderdome. And as per usual, before we launch in and do the thing, this video is sponsored by American Hartford Gold. And of course, by me. If you so desire, feel free to go and subscribe to the email list on my website. I have a new weekly newsletter. I let you know when new merch or videos drop and uh, you can stay up to date with all of the things. All of the things. As I always say, it helps me a lot, helps us stay in touch stay together, like I'm your dad or something. Now, obviously there are a lot of very serious things going on in the world, like the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, but I'm assuming you have all been completely saturated with that. And I was thinking that maybe it's time for a change of pace. And because it's been a while since we laughed and cringed together on this channel, I thought today we could do just that. The education system has long been of great concern to me and progressive leftist teachers are even more of a concern. And for some reason, they have to post their every waking thought on TikTok, giving us a very, very large portion of information from which to draw, not only to make fun of them, but to also see what they're doing in classrooms and what they're teaching to your kids. So that we can then call the FBI, because why are these people allowed near tiny humans? I'm also very aware that many people in this community are parents, so a lot of this directly affects your pudding people. And it's always worth having your ear to the ground when it comes to the absolute insanity these lunatics are carrying out because it's bad like really really bad but before we get into all of this and some of you most of you i'm assuming will realize that maybe homeschooling is not the worst idea in the world let's hear from today's sponsor american hartford gold remember when you could fill up your car and it didn't cost you all of your legs i remember it was nice inflation is up all over the place i'm told if things don't improve soon your fuel will cost you all of your hands. This is where gold and silver comes in. American Hartford Gold is a great company to use if you're interested in having or investing in precious metals. And let's be real, physical gold and silver is a great asset to have. It's an investment you can actually hold in your hand, use as a weapon, although I don't recommend that. Personally, I find a lot of this really confusing, so if you too are not an expert, that is okay. American Hartford Gold can walk you through your options and show you how to protect yourself against inflation and turn a portion of your money into physical gold and silver. They can have it delivered to your door or inside your IRA or 401k. American Hartford Gold can make the process of buying precious metals straightforward and idiot-proof. So, if you in fact like shiny, shiny things, Click the link in the description or text Sydney to 65532. Do this and American Hartford Gold will give you up to $1,500 worth of free silver on your first order and you too can be like a pirate. Now, it's been long understood that the education system is more or less inherently left-wing, at least when it comes to universities and higher education. And this infection has made its way into many areas, if not most areas of academia, including medicine and the sciences. But more than that, the one area that this ideology is beginning to take root, if it hasn't taken root already, is in kindergarten, primary school, and secondary school, where the freshest of minds are there to be molded into the hammer and sickle. Just kidding, but not really. This picture is from a Texas high school and these children are wearing the hammer and sickle. I'd like to know what's happening here. I have so many questions. In addition to things like critical race theory, which has concerned parents all over the place, just like this one. CRT deal, because it's, it's happening. And as a parent, I speak to other parents. There's a few things that we don't want. I'm biracial, I'm bilingual, I'm multicultural. The fact is in America, in North Carolina, I can do anything I want and I teach that to my children. And the person who tells my little pecan color kids that they're somehow oppressed based on the color of their skin would be absolutely wrong and absolutely at war with me. And this one? I just wanna counteract that. I actually pulled my daughter out of AM Culp because of the fifth grade teacher who lined those students up from whitest to darkest, made them turn around and the white ones need to apologize to the black ones. Now, do not tell me that it did not happen, okay, in this district. You need to put an end to this. Kids do not see color, and you are segregating them, and you are separating them. This 
This is not okay. There has been a rise of very, very loud progressive teachers going on the internet and telling you exactly what they're doing in their classrooms. There is, for whatever reason, a very strong emphasis on teachers sharing with their often young students their sexuality, whether or not they're transgender, who they're attracted to, and other creepy things that I'm not sure why kids need to know this. In fact, if you peruse TikTok for long enough, you'll come across plenty of coming out to my students videos. I'm about to come out to all my students. I just realized in post-edit that this audio is probably copyrighted, so uh, yeah, this is basically just this human being telling his class that he's a uh, non-binary and responds to all pronouns, and then everyone applauds. Literally. I just... I don't think I'll ever understand why adults feel the need to do this. To children. That are not their own. Mentally ill and emotionally disturbed. Or you'll find them explaining their pronouns and then forcing children to use them. And it was like so awesome today. We were... I was in charge of our like active activity and one of the kids referred to me as a girl and one of my kids was like, Jamie doesn't have a gender. Jamie's not a girl. Oh my God. And like, the kid was just like, what do you mean? And she was just like, Jamie doesn't have a gender. Jamie is not a girl. I like the way that like, the way that has me is so emotional. <laughs> I also have a lot of questions here about why this person is documenting an emotional breakdown. <laughs> why do so many unstable people teach children? She was like, Jamie's they. <laughs> She's eight. <laughs> My 52 year old parents still fucking call me she after being out for three years. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably because they aren't being indoctrinated. Like that was like, so awesome. That was just like so awesome. Like I've like never felt more love than like when I am with my kids. <laughs> listen, Linda, honey, listen. There's something very wrong maybe with you specifically if you need your validation from school age children. What do your students call you since you're non-binary? Miko's one of my students. What do you call me, Mika? They, them. I mean, this child just looks like she's under duress. That's my pronouns, but what do you call me as your teacher? Teacher Roby. So you know my pronouns are they, them. You know that you go by, or I go by Teacher Roby. What are your pronouns? She, her. Very good. And is, um, how do you feel about calling me Teacher Roby, and how do you feel about my pronouns being they, them? I feel good about your pronouns, and I think you should accept yourself and don't listen to the disrespect. You should definitely accept yourself. Absolutely. I love that for you. And um, when when sometimes if a student um, messes up my pronouns and says she, her, or calls me Miss Roby, what do I say? You say she or they. Right. And then I also will remind you to call me what? Teacher Roby. I have somebody who has narcissistic pathology. I am an out teacher at my school, out as both bisexual and trans. And a lot of other teachers on TikTok were wondering how I managed coming out to my students. Is that what you're going to call me from now on? <laughs> Them Mandy. Them Mandy. Them the Mandy. I like it. I like it. I think it's pretty good. Do we have to, do we say them or the, they? Uh you would say they if you were saying if you were talking about me and you were like they are really awesome. Or if you said I want to give this piece of candy to them. Um, Get it? I like your hair. They. How, or how about if you, do, how about I like, or how about. I like your hair, then Mandy. <laughs> yeah. Close enough. We'll work on the grammar later. That's pretty good, though. I like it. Well, today I read that two black holes are going to smash together and kill us all, and honestly, I'm fine with it. It'll be worth never having to see this haircut again. If you stay on the hellscape that is TikTok for any length of time, you will also probably come across videos of people saying that they won't divulge to students' parents when they come out as trans or something of the like. Because as the person at the start of this video reminds us, these people do not think that they answer to parents. You know, the humans who birthed the child that you're grooming. And that is why we use witch for unrestrictive sentences, okay? All right, end of class. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's up? No, no, come here. All right, what's on your mind? 
Oh, no way. All right, is there a different way you would like for me to refer to you as? What? All right, is there a different way you would like for me to refer to you as? Ah, uh, no, I love that. That is so great. I think that name fits you really well. I will definitely write that down so I don't forget. Oh, no, that's totally fine. All right, what we can do in that situation is during parent-teacher conferences, I will refer to you as your legal name. But here in the classroom, I want to make sure you always feel comfortable, included, and safe, you know, all those good things. So I'll definitely be referring to you as that, okay? <laughs> okay. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you tomorrow. Coincidentally, in the last few days, we've come to find out that North Carolina schools allow students to change their name and sex without parental consent. The North Carolina Department of Public Instruction, DPI, notified school districts in March of 2021 that Power Schools Student Information System would display a student's preferred name on school records. And just last week, the DPI removed the sex of public school students from official state records in at least three districts. Then we have... Whatever this is. Hi everybody. Oh, just girls today? That's fine. I hate boys. Jill wears a dress. Tra la la. But if Jack wants to wear a dress, that's super cool. S makes the s sound. S s systemic racism. Good. What does she need? Yes, she needs a fork. Good. And what does he need? Therapy, good! And why hasn't there been a woman prime minister in Japan? Think, think, think. Hmm. Bert and Ernie are boyfriend and boyfriend. Let's talk about Japanese war crimes. Honestly, only one person in this video needs therapy, and it isn't the dude in the picture. So I'm not allowed to be out as trans non-binary at school. Do not come up in my comments saying that I am allowed because I'm not. I live in Louisiana and it sucks here. So of course my response to this is to be as obnoxiously queer as possible. So I've got my rainbow hair with leopard print. I've got my rainbow glasses. Sometimes I wear pins too with various rainbow things on them. I don't have any today, I just have my COVID sticker. I wear things that do not match at all. Basically my goal is to look like a unicorn threw me up. If I can't do that, what's the point? I'm noticing a trend with these nose rings. Must be how they contact the mothership. But really dumb, cringy TikToks aside, and believe me, there are many, the curriculum being taught in schools around the country is very concerning. At Whitney High School in California, students were given a quiz where they were asked a complete group of idiots, and then given the options KKK, all of Florida, Fox News, and Texans. Imagine being told that you're the bigger idiot than the person that can't work out which gender they are. On another survey for grades 7 to 12 across Minnesota, students were asked their gender identity, which included things like non-binary and two-spirit. It's all just so... <laughs> They were also asked for their sexual orientation, such as asexual, queer, pansexual, and the like. I love this one answer that's just, I'm not sure what this question means. Nothing. The question means nothing. During a grade seven grammar lesson in Frisco, Texas, and seriously guys, I want to cry when I see these things happening in Texas. Good grief. Kids are being taught that they isn't always plural because some people don't go by he and she. And honestly, what's so sad about all of this is that it's directly affecting the crazy gender confusion that we're seeing in kids, which I've spoken about in countless other videos. Because it is National Pronouns Day, I'm just gonna let you know my pronouns are he, him, and demon, demon self. This image was taken in another classroom showing a plethora of sexualities and telling students how to be a better ally. Which, you know, doesn't really surprise me. I mean, here's one teacher showing us the inside of classrooms at her school, and almost all of them have the LGBTQIA XYZ flag and Black Lives Matter flags. Well, I guess now I'm no longer shocked by the video of a teacher in, again, Texas saying that she wants all conservative Christians to get COVID and die. I'm telling her. I'm going to see my boyfriend. Oh! Well, okay then. But guys, let's also not forget the hypersexualization of children. We have all heard about the graphic books being introduced to children, but you also have this, asking 14-year-olds to share their sexual desires in the form of pizza toppings? 
What even is this? Obviously, you might not be able to list all of your wants, desires, and boundaries, but hopefully you'll start feeling more comfortable about discussing them. For those of y'all who don't like pizza or sex at all, feel free to draw out another food favorite or include non-sexual activities. I'm also curious to know when this constitutes as grooming. I have so many questions. Then we come along to critical race theory. And oh, do they love this topic. Here, high school students throw out dozens of books written by white authors to decolonize the school library. Yeah, throwing away stock market books is in fact a good plan, for sure. I like the part of this where they throw out writings by Russo who, I don't know, like, if these kids know who Russo is and the things he did and said, that would shock me. That's how bad the education system is. These screenshots are part of the curriculum for Boston area kindergarten to year eight schools. They talk about exploring white privilege, lessons in whiteness, and privilege and oppression. Huh. Well, I guess that's how we end up with people like this. White people. Come here. Come here. Y'all need to sue the government. And I, wait, I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. Now, they owe us, black people, reparations. Because of people like this? I'm a fourth grade teacher and I do a lot of work with social justice and equity in my classroom. We have racialized conversations all the time. I, Hannah Fannin Steele, am a racist. I am a product of the white dominant structure I was raised in. My people have done an excellent job lifting each other up. Unfortunately, that was on the backs of people of color. Because this is deeply embedded in my history, it is no wonder I was passed down views that are racially problematic. Even though white supremacy can be unconscious, it is constant. Living in this society would have been a miracle for me to be anything but racist. Now that I know I have deeply rooted racist tendencies, I can constantly be looking and listening for how they surface in my life. And when a person of color gives me feedback for not being a good ally, I can say thank you and not get defensive. Lady, you couldn't oppress yourself out of a wet paper bag. Only a few weeks ago, Justice Page Middle School in Minneapolis gave advice to students in this directive about how to participate in Black Lives Matter protests. <sighs> Make sure to bring your first aid kit and your snacks. <laughs> My personal favorite is the recent story of a Montessori in Massachusetts trying so hard to be woke that they had kindergartners paint black faces on paper plates to hold over their own faces for Black History Month. I am convinced we live in hell. Plenty of schools from kindergarten up to high school integrate Black Lives Matter curriculum, or CRT if that's the preferred terminology, into their teachings. These images are taken from various schools across the USA, all referencing Black Lives Matter in one way or another. This one refers to January 6th and says that protesters weren't stopped because they're white and privileged. At this school board meeting in Santa Barbara, California, these students sing the Black National Anthem. Huh, wait a minute, there's a Black National Anthem? In the background of these students, you can see signs saying George Floyd matters and Black Lives Matter. A school board in Seattle recently defended the fact that they had segregated meetings by skin color in order to be inclusive. This middle school in Lafayette, Louisiana wants racially conscious white students. And on and on and on it goes. But you know, perhaps my favorite story in all of this is one about a Michigan school compiling a dossier of parents who commented negatively on the school's virtual learning policy. The school superintendent went as far as to call a parent's employer and tell them that she did a bad thing. She was subsequently fired. Now, there is plenty to be said about the state of the education system, but we don't have enough time to get into it today, but I am actually happy to make another video deep diving into this topic. But even so, I still hope that this video illustrates at least in part some of the lunacy that is going on in relation to your pudding people. The issue, it seems, is that teachers see themselves as political activists doling out justice for children while simultaneously shaming them for being white or making black students feel victimized. In addition to that, there's the oversharing issue and the fact that teachers are pushing their value systems onto kids with not enough pushback from school boards and parents themselves. It gives you a very good insight into how progressivism is taking a hold and strangling the life out of the knowledge that your kids could potentially have. And that is alarming. Much as I personally enjoy a good laugh at radical leftists, 
All of this is exceedingly concerning to me. And in the end, I firmly believe that if we want to wrangle back the education system, we must start with teachers like this, with the school boards, and parents need to get involved directly. In reality, we need to start rooting out anybody who is undermining the education of our children. Now, before I open the floor to all of you, this is just a reminder that you can check out American Hartford Gold using the link in the description. Or you can text Sydney to 65532 or call this number to investigate and get your hands on some gold and silver. Now, I open the floor to all of you. What do you all think? Is the education system actually as messed up as I personally think it is? Do you think that these teachers are doing the right thing by their students? Do you think that these teachers are representative of a wider group of teachers? Or do you think that they're just a small, very vocal minority? What do you think of the curriculum being taught in relation to critical race theory and gender theory? And what do you generally make of this issue overall? As always, if you like the video, hit subscribe and the thumbs up button. If you want to leave a comment for free to do so, just be respectful about it. And I will see you guys next time.